Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I am here with my spoiler-free review for A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabot, translated by Hildegard Searle. I received a free copy in exchange for an honest review, so thank you so much Europa Editions, and this is the first book in the Mere Visitor series. And as I said, this whole review is going to be spoiler-free, so you can decide if it sounds like something that you would like to pick up. So in this world, there was a cataclysmic event that basically caused the land masses that we know today to kind of break up and actually turn into these things called arcs, which are kind of floating cities in the sky. And each of these arcs has kind of a different power or skill associated with it. And our main character is Ophelia, and she is from an arc called Anima, which makes her an animist. And her ability is the ability to read, so she can actually touch objects and kind of see the pasts of its previous owners or occupants or whatever it is. She's very happy in her little uh, museum. She's kind of a curator and she's very quiet, she's very shy, she doesn't really like interacting with people. She is very content to just stay in her quiet little corner and kind of take care of her museum. Then one day she finds out that she has actually been promised in marriage to an important person on another arc called the Pole and she is going to be shipped off to marry him and for all these like political reasons that nobody actually tells her about she is going to have to live there for the rest of her life. So this book follows her journey there, and then once she gets to the pole, kind of how Ophelia is trying to understand this really confusing world of court politics and intrigue and where she fits into all of these different people and what they want and what they want from her. I will also be sure to include the full official synopsis in the description bar. Now we're going to move into my thoughts on the book and for that I'm going to put it down so that I can use my hands freely. So the first thing I want to talk about is the writing of this book. I really enjoyed the writing style. I thought it was descriptive without being overdone and I think that for the most part I really understood and could picture all of these different settings and places and people and especially the ones that you know are not really at all similar to our world. I didn't really have a problem picturing them because of how well the description was done. And at the same time, like I said, I don't think it overtook the story. I think there was a nice balance of that with the plot and with the characters. And all of this is of course a credit both to the author Christelle Dabo and to her translator Hildegard Searle. I think that Sometimes when people go into translated books, there can be that fear that it's going to feel really clunky or that basically that it's going to be obvious that it was translated from one language to another and that we're not reading it in its original language. And I didn't have that problem with this one at all. I have read a few translated books at this point and I definitely think this is a really good translation. Of course, I don't speak French, so I can't confirm like, ah, yes, they did a great job of, you know, translating the French text into English. But from the perspective of somebody who reads in English, I don't think I even would have guessed that this had been translated because the writing was so seamless. I also want to talk about the world building because I think that's definitely a big component of this book. As I kind of mentioned while, when I was discussing the writing, for the most part, I had a very clear picture of what this world looked like. We are kind of thrown into it at the beginning, like there's not a big long section of like info dumping or you know exposition or anything, but I actually didn't have a problem with that. I think that we pretty like we were able to pick up on details as we needed to know them. There were a couple of aspects of the world that I was a little confused on, but then as soon as we actually moved into the part of the plot where Ophelia actually goes to the pole and she sees a different arc, I think that contrast finally like solidified what this world looked like in my head. So I would say that the world building was really well done. Another thing that's great about it is how unique it was. I don't remember reading many stories that kind of took this approach, you know, that had this kind of setup and this kind of environment, and I really enjoyed that. As far as the plot went, I really enjoyed it and I found it pretty unpredictable for the most part. And you guys know, I've talked about before on this channel how I've always just been pretty good at kind of guessing plot developments or just like the general direction a story is going to go. And this one I couldn't really. Like there were some expectations or conclu or conclusions that I had drawn and they were actually, like, the book ended up kind of subverting those and going in some really creative directions. I also loved the amount of intrigue and court politics. You know, sometimes you read a book that's like, oh, it's all about political manipulations and there's all this, like, drama and stuff, and you read the book and there's, like, every once in a while there's a minor character who's in some form of danger, but for the most part things are pretty much okay. This book is not like that. By the way, I can still definitely enjoy books that are like that, that are kind of light on the court politics. I don't mind that at all. But I think A Winter's Promise really took the like court politics and the intrigue and the backstabbing and all of that to, to its utmost extent and I really enjoyed that. Like this is definitely a heavy book, like there are some really dark moments and I was genuinely afraid for our characters. <laughs> I was really invested in their plight and I also felt like you know anything could happen to them, like something drastic could go wrong. Like I don't think the author was necessarily going to pull back on some of it so that was also a really interesting reading experience. So I think if I think for people who are kind of tired of books that they feel don't go far enough with that, I think this one might be one for you. The only part of the plot that I felt wasn't quite as well integrated or fleshed out was 
like some elements about the prologue and epilogue, like these little snippets we get about, I think a journal or something. I was not quite as clear on what those meant and why those were important, but I do think from other things that happened in the book, I think we're going to have that more explained in the subsequent books. And then the only other thing that I was a little confused on sometimes were uh, the actual families themselves, like these warring factions. There were a couple of spots, like mostly near the beginning, where I kind of lost track of who was on what side and like who was allied with whom, but I don't think that was a huge, like, I don't think that was necessarily a bad thing. Because, like, we're following Ophelia, and Ophelia herself is actually kind of confused about, you know, who's on what team as we start the book. So I think some of that may have been intentional. And those moments didn't last very long either. Like I said, especially as we got to the actual part of the book that takes place on the pole, which is the majority of the book, I definitely was able to sort out, like, who was a good guy, who was a bad guy, who you weren't sure about, things like that. So that's not necessarily, like, a criticism of the book. That's just something to keep in mind, is, like, if you're reading and you're like, I don't really get, like, I need some, <laughs> I need some, like, color coding or something, because I don't really understand, like, which of these people is on which side. I think that does get better as the book goes on. And finally, I want to talk about the characters of the book, which might have been my favorite element of this story. I think all of them were so well developed. I definitely had some that I changed my mind about, especially kind of the two central characters. Well, Ophelia is definitely the protagonist, but then Thorne is also a really important uh, character in the book as well. And Ophelia, I was just so impressed and amazed by how much I grew to love her by the end of the book. Because when she's introduced, I didn't necessarily dislike her, but I didn't feel that much for her one way or the other. And there was kind of this like undercurrent of like she's being better than other girls because she likes to be in the library or in the museum and other girls like to wear dresses and stuff like that. But that pretty much went away as soon as she got to the pole and she started interacting with different kinds of people from her and from who she was used to. So I think that was a really important moment in her in her character development. And I also just really grew to admire her strength and her intelligence. And, you know, she definitely makes mistakes because this world is so different from what she's used to. But I could really understand why she was doing what she did. I really just was impressed by how well she handled herself and how resourceful she was when she was thrown into this environment that again is like not something she's used to. And I think this was a great example of character development when it's not necessarily like, oh, she's really different than she was at the beginning, although I think there were some things about her that did change that much. But I think a big part of it and a big part of why I really liked her is that she was put into a situation where she could show characteristics that she always had. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, suddenly she's a strong character. It was like she's always had this core of strength and now she's put in a position where she has to use it where she and where she can use it. And I thought that was really beautifully done. And now moving on to Thorne, who's her, like, fiancé and kind of one of the other, uh, important characters in the book. I have so many conflicting feelings about him. I really, like, if he, I think he's a great character, first off. And also, this book does not have any romance in it, so if that's something you've been looking for, you might want to look at this one. But I really like him, I think? I don't know. There's still some things where it's like, I don't actually know what I want to happen with Thorn. Like, I don't understand all of him. Like, do I trust him? Do I like him? Do I want to like him? But he's definitely a great addition to the book. And he's a character where, when he was introduced, I was like, I do not like you. <laughs> like, I don't want you in this book. But as we went on, we got some more backstory about him and we saw him in different, like, situations. And I really grew to like and appreciate him a lot more. And not that that excuses the way he behaved at the beginning, because it doesn't really. And the characters themselves don't really excuse him either. Like, Ophelia doesn't, like, completely get over the way he behaved to her at first. But... I really do think that we see more of what made him the way he is, and I can kind of understand that, even if it doesn't excuse 100% of his behavior, which I really liked. Going back to the no romance thing, I think there there are some hints or some like groundwork laid for a potential relationship, maybe in future books, although that would be really complicated for a lot of reasons. And that's another thing where I'm like not really sure what I want to happen with it. I think that if that were to develop, I think it could be done very well. The only thing, I'm not 100% sure of their respective ages, because kind of how they interact, it's sometimes difficult to tell, like, how old Thorne is compared to Ophelia, and, like, she's definitely treated as, like, so, some other characters sort of treat her as, like, this little girl, like, a child bride almost, and that's really weird, and, like, that is from characters who we aren't really supposed to agree with, but I think that is something that would have to be like, handled very carefully in subsequent books to make sure it's not, like, really just an unhealthy power dynamic kind of thing, but I am interested to see where their kind of 
relationship like friendship or whatever like however they interact with each other i really loved all of their scenes together and i'm interested to see where that goes in further books also like as i was reading the book i was like thorn like the way he's described is like like really tall and like stern and like his features and everything i was like he really reminds me of somebody and i couldn't think who and then i realized it was richard armitage from north and south that is like kind of how i'm picturing which you know doesn't hurt but I just thought that was kind of funny because even their names are similar so I don't know if that if that helps you while you're reading the book you know and there were also a couple of side characters that were introduced later who I really loved or who like we got to see more of and then I ended up really liking them and like I just really I had so many more like feelings and strong feelings about these characters than I was expecting to so that was really wonderful it's also stated and kind of emphasized that Ophelia has never felt I think she says like desire for another uh for anybody else for another man or another person so i don't know if ophelia is written to be an asexual character but i think you definitely could read her that way so that is something also to kind of like keep in mind i don't know if that will be made more explicit or like addressed more in further books so altogether i really enjoyed a winter's promise and i ended up giving it four stars i would recommend this book i think especially if you were looking for kind of a more high stakes kind of political intrigue situation like i said there's a lot of intense uh things going on i think this would be for you if you're looking for a book that doesn't have a romance that like doesn't feature a romantic relationship at all really then i think this would be a great book and also if you're just looking for a really like creative kind of fantasy i think this would also be a great book for you i really enjoyed it like i said and please let me know if you guys are planning to pick this one up thank you guys so much for watching i will see you soon with another video and i hope you love the next book you read bye